much than bullets fired from different guns. According to Backrack, these results indicate that the pattern matching undertaken by examiners for decades is in fact valid. It's an important step in cementing the scientific foundation of firearms analysis and making sure crime labs don't lose one of their most valuable tools. It's been used for decades in thousands of cases. It's called comparative bullet lead analysis. But how valid is it? And can it withstand scientific scrutiny? Twenty-five million bullets are produced in the United States every day. That's nine billion bullets a year. Now imagine a forensic technique that could take any two of those bullets and prove they were made at the same time from the same batch of lead and even packed and shipped in the same box. It sounds far-fetched, but for nearly 40 years, in thousands of cases, that's exactly what the FBI claimed it could do. Until scientific research shot that claim full of holes. For decades, when all these FBI examiners were coming to court and saying, we can say with a reasonable degree of scientific certainty that this bullet came from that box of ammunition, they were all wrong. The technique is called Comparative Bullet Lead Analysis, or CBLA. Unlike firearms analysis, which looks at the outside of bullets, CBLA looks at the inside, the chemical composition of the bullet itself. The theory behind CBLA is that every batch of bullet lead has a unique chemical fingerprint. So if two bullets match, they must have been made from the same source of lead. The process works like this. An examiner gets two bullets to compare, typically a spent bullet taken from a crime scene and an unused bullet found in the suspect's possession. She starts by slicing off fragments of each bullet and dissolving them in an acidic solution. She then takes the two samples and introduces them one at a time into a spectrophotometer, a machine that can detect and measure the elements in a given substance. The machine pumps each sample into a plasma torch, which heats them to a temperature of nearly 5,000 degrees. That breaks the samples down into individual elements, including arsenic, copper and tin, which are found in trace amounts in bullet lead. Based on their different wavelengths, the spectrophotometer can determine which elements are present and in what quantity. The examiner then compares the results to see if the two samples match. If they do, investigators consider that to be powerful circumstantial evidence linking the suspect to the crime. Whether it's accurate is another story. You hear that the FBI uh, is uh, saying that the bullets match that's pretty devastating information. Jacqueline Bain is a sociology professor from New Jersey who has taught courses in criminology. In May 1997, CBLA evidence helped convict her brother Michael of murder. But there was something about CBLA that to Jacqueline didn't add up. You try to say, um, that any two bullets match or that they came from the same box or that one could tell when a bullet was manufactured it just didn't seem uh, statistically like one could do that. Bain contacted William Tobin, a former forensic metallurgist at the FBI crime lab. Tobin agreed to look into the scientific validity of CBLA. He soon realized that it was uncharted territory. There were no meaningful or comprehensive studies ever of the practice. So could CBLA really prove that two bullets came from the same batch of lead, let alone the same box? Tobin had to go back to the very start, the refineries where bullet lead is produced.
bullet lead comes from an unexpected source, recycled car batteries. Every day, refineries like this one in Minnesota take discarded batteries, crush them, and melt them back down into lead. The lead is then refined in 100-ton batches, each of which can produce up to 34 million bullets. Though they try to purify the lead as much as possible, trace amounts of other elements always remain. The elements that show up in comparative bullet lead analysis. CBLA assumes that they will appear in exactly the same proportions in every bullet, from bullet number one to bullet number 34 million. But as Tobin and his team discovered, that's not how it works. Data from the refineries showed that the elements in a batch of bullet lead are not spread uniformly throughout. They clump and cluster, what metallurgists call segregation. That means the chemical composition of one bullet may be different from that of a second bullet, even though they came from the same batch of lead. What's more, that first bullet could randomly match another bullet made days, months or even years later. Taken together, these findings proved that investigators could draw no reliable conclusions from CBLA evidence, undercutting more than three decades of FBI testimony at a stroke. Our research confirmed that the practice of comparative bullet lead analysis as it was being presented in the courtroom was without scientifically valid foundation. Tobin's study marked the beginning of the end for comparative bullet lead analysis. In September 2005, the FBI announced that it was abandoning the technique altogether. The Bureau estimates that CBLA examiners have testified in approximately 500 trials dating back to the mid-1980s. So now we know, well, okay, so in uh, hundreds and hundreds of cases over decades, something was said in court that had no scientific value. That's a bad place to be. Critics of CBLA saw it as a symbol of flawed forensics. And less than a year later, the FBI pulled the plug on another technique. The analysis of gunshot residue. Forensic science has changed dramatically over the past decade. Research has opened up new frontiers. While calling old techniques